Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we're going to look at corporate finance and the financial manager. This topic is covered in an introduction to corporate finance or simply introduction to finance depending on which university you are using. This topic is also covered on the CPA BEC exam as well as the ACCA exam. As always I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 lectures, which including corporate finance. So I do have a complete course, not a complete course, but a course for corporate finance. I'm working on completing the course. Also on my channel, you can find other courses, other accounting courses. Please take a look and you have a wide variety of courses. If you are studying for, with, for a CPA exam or CFA exam, you wanna check out studypal.co. It's where you can connect with other study bodies in your area. They have users in 85 countries from LA to New York. It's an artificial intelligence study body platform. I suggest you check them out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and use the textbook. And basically this is, think of this as chapter one or the one on corporate finance course. What do you, what you would need to know? Well, think about it. The first thing is you wanna know, what are you studying? What is corporate finance? What is this concept? What's this? You are taking a course in finance, specifically corporate finance. What is a corporate finance? Well, think about businesses. We're talking about for-profit businesses. What do for-profit businesses like to do? Well, they like to make a profit. Well, to make a profit, you have to properly plan your financing. So imagine you want to start your own business and it doesn't matter what type of business. You'll have to answer the following question. Question one, what long-term investment should you take on? Okay, that is what line of business? will you be in and what sort of building machinery and equipment will you need? Simply put, depending on the need of your business, you might have to buy machinery, land, building, software, computers, servers, depending what your business you have. So you have a need to plan. Where, where will you get the long-term financing to pay for your investments? Now, if you have money up front, that's not an issue whatsoever. But the point is companies don't have all the money that they need up front. Therefore, they have to rely on stockholders. They have to rely on creditors. They have to rely on suppliers, okay? Will you bring in, in, in other owners or would you borrow money? So that's another way, how you finance yourself, how you structure your business. And how will you manage your day-to-day your -day financial activities, such as collecting from customers and paying for suppliers? Now, those three topics, they have technical words, which we're going to see in a moment, but I'm just planting the seed for that concept. So simply put, we have a financial manager. Now, why the financial manager is a little bit different in the real world? Well, it's different because we're dealing with large corporation. So the feature of large corporation, especially multinational or even large corporation, doesn't have to be multinational, is the owners are not usually directly involved in making day-to-day -day business operation. Uh, for example, Bill Gates. Bill Gates don't run Microsoft. Bill Gates make decision on a high basis. They don't, they don't you know, they used to. Um, run the company on a day-to-day -day basis, but no, that's no longer the case. They can't do that. They have thousands and thousands of employees and hundreds, if not thousands of different projects. So what happened? The corporation employs managers to represent the owner's interests. Now we're going to learn later on in this chapter, there might be a conflict between the owners and the managers, but that's we'll talk about this topic separately. So they will hire managers to make a decision on their behalf. So in large corporation, the financial manager would be in charge of answering the three questions that we raised earlier, and we're going to put some words on them. So the financial management function is usually associated with top officers of the firm, such as the VP of finance or some other chief financial officer. Now we're going to look at a figure that kind of shows us the simplified version of the corporate organ organization. Okay, so let's take a look actually at the picture. So this way we'll get an idea what we are looking at. So this way we kind of point out who's responsible for what in a corporate setting. So this is what a typical simplified um, organization chart would look like. So let's take a look at it. So on the top of the organization, on the top of the organizations is the board of directors. The board of directors, you have to understand, they're not really on the top. Really, who's on the top? On the top are the stockholders. But the stockholders, what they do, because the stockholders, they cannot run the company. They have other jobs. They have other responsibilities. All what they do is they have money and they invest in this company. So they vote this group. This group is voted. Voted. And this group is suppo supposedly represent, not supposedly, that's what they're supposed to do, is represent the 
yes, supposedly represent the stockholders or the shareholders or the owners. Now, the board of directors will select the CEO or the chairman of the board and the chief executive officer. The CEO would select the president and chief operation officer. Now, it doesn't have to be this way. You just may need a CEO. Then this individual would select the VP of marketing, the VP of finance, the VP of production. Now, then you have to understand something here. Once we get to this point, at some point, we have to have separate separate uh, uh, separate uh, structure we have to have the treasurer and the controller okay under the president vice vp of finance which is under the cfo those two positions should be separate now let, let me explain to you why from an internal control perspective treasurers think of them as the individuals that handles let me take change this handles the cash ha handles the dollar amount so under the treasurer you have the cash manager person that touches the cash deposit the cash receives the cash handles the cash you have the credit manager who who approves the sales now notice the cash manager and the credit managers are different notice they are kind of separated notice this and the reason is this now i'm going to tell you why those two separated in a moment but why is the cash manager separated from the credit manager the credit manager have every incentive to grant credit for everyone okay why because they would increase sales the cash manager handles the cash so granting credit and handling cash collecting cash should be different also under the treasurer you have a capital expenditure and the financial planning basic capital expenditure is long-term planning and financial planning is how are you planning to finance those expenditure now you have to understand the reason we have kind of a separate wall between this group let's call them the tre group a treasurers and group b group b controller think of these are the accounting people they handle the books, they handle the accounting record, such as the tax manager, the cost accounting manager, the financial accounting manager, and the data processing manager. Think of them as they handle the data, and the data would include, so notice data processing manager and financial accounting manager, data include accounting, okay? And the people with access to the data, to access to programming, they should not have access to this side of things, which is the cash. Why? Because if you can change the books, here's the books here. If you can change the record, if you can change the record, then you can manipulate the books and cover your tracks. Now, remember, we are dealing with large corporations, with people with a lot of responsibilities. So if you could hide your track, hide your tracks then you'll be able to steal money from the company so that's why those they separate them once we get to that level then you then we hire employees and employees work for the corporation now let's talk about the three uh, the three tasks that managers would need to do remember what we talked about they said ma managers will need to will need to, to do three tasks one of them is called capital budgeting and what is capital budgeting capital budgeting is the process of planning and managing a firm long-term investments remember you have to buy vehicles, land, equipment, that's part of starting a business. This process is called capital budgeting. In capital budgeting, the financial manager try to identify investment opportunities that are worth more to the firm than they cost to acquire. Now you have to understand we have a full chapter, it's called capital budgeting. So we would learn in details, I don't know what chapter is this, maybe a chapter 12 in this book, I'm not sure, but I already covered that chapter. So capital budgeting is one of the, one of the, one of the main, uh, main tasks of uh, corporate finance okay loosely speaking this means that the value of the cash generated must exceed um, generated by the asset exceed the cost and that's obvious simply put cash flow must be greater than the cost now this is a simplified formula what we do with the cash flow we discount the cash flow and we'll talk we talked about this in in another chapter okay the type of investment opportunities that would be typically be considered dependent in part on the nature of the firm so what type of capital budgeting decisions we're going to be making depending on what business you are in for example if you look at walmart okay they decide whether to open another store would be an important capital budgeting decision it's so capital budgeting is when you are investing a large amount of money for a project for example opening a new walmart is a law is a capital budgeting maybe buying a fleet of trucks for walmart that's capital budgeting buying a warehouse that's capital budgeting okay because those decisions affect the company for many years and they require a substantial amount of money okay some decisions such as what type of computer system to purchase might not depending on a particular line of business so if you're buying more one or two computers it doesn't really it's not a capital budgeting process 
But if you are buying, if you're updating all the computers at the company and you're trying to update the computers for several years, that's a capital budgeting decision. So that's one of the things that managers will have to tackle is capital budgeting. And this is what we mean by capital budgeting is basically answering one, what long-term investment should we take on? The second thing that corporate finance are responsible for is where will you get the long-term financing? And this is where we come up to the second is what's called capital structure. So what is capital structure? So the second question for the financial manager concern is how do we finance the firm, long-term financing? How do we finance the firm? So hopefully you understand that assets equal to liabilities plus, let me just write this, liabilities plus equity. Now. Now, my channel is all about accounting, so I live and die by this uh, by this equation. So all your assets are coming from either debt or equity, which is stock. Think about stocks and bonds. Think about stock and bonds. So the financial manager will have to determine the capital structure. Basically, if we have 100 of assets and we have $30 in liabilities and $70 in equity, we say our capital structure is 70% equity and 30% debt. Okay, so we are financed by 70% equity, 30% debt. Now, generally speaking, not generally speaking, if at any, for any given company, they always prefer not to have debt. They prefer to have equity, generally speaking, unless interest rate is low and the company have enough cash flow to cover the, uh, the interest cost, then they might prefer that. But what do, how, do we, how do we do this capital structuring? Depending on many factors, depending on many factors. Okay, is the specific mixture of long-term debt and equity uh, of the firm uses for its operation. So how do they bring their assets? Do they borrow money or do they raise money through stocks? First, how much should the firm borrow? That is, what's the mixture of debt and equity is best? And there is something called maximizing capital structure and that's a separate topic we'll, we'll discuss in later stages. The mixture choosing will affect both the risk and the value of the firm. Now, the more debt you have, if you have more debt relative to equity, you are riskier. Okay, and also we have to manage risk. Also, we have to manage in the cost of the the cost of financing. Sometimes equity is very expensive because the stockholders would require you to have a lot of return. Sometimes debt, for example, for the past I would say ten years in the U.S., interest rate is low. So companies, corporations, has been heavily borrowing money, financing themselves through debt, is because it's cheap. It's simply cheap. But if something happened and if the economy turns south and we'll have a corporate debt explosion because they cannot pay their interest okay because the interest rate will go up and they have more they have to pay more okay so if we picture the firm as a pie so if you didn't get a pie like this you know for example we could have this much equity and the rest debt so okay in other words what percentage of the firm cash flow goes to the creditor and what percentage goes to the shareholders creditor get the interest the shareholder get part of the profit firm have a great deal of flexibility in choosing the financial structure Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes simply no one wants to lend you money because you're doing you're not doing a good job. And sometimes nobody wants to even give you money because you're a, uh, your stock is not doing well. Therefore, no one wants to buy your stock. So it's, I, would, I, would, I would not say they have a lot of flexibility, but if they're doing good, they have some flexibility. Okay. In addition to deciding the financing mix, the financial manager has to decide exactly how and where to raise money. The expenses associated with raising long-term financing can be considerable. So different possibilities should be evaluated carefully. And this is part of the finance manager. So that's the second thing that the finance, finance manager will have to tackle is the capital structure. How do we struct financially, uh, how do we financially, how do we financially finance the company? Is it through debt or is it through equity and the third job for the corporate finance manager is something called working capital what is working capital well working capital is think of it short term okay the firm working capital referring to the firm short-term assets such as inventory and its short-term liabilities such as money owed to suppliers if you really want to think about it you can say let me just tell you capital budgeting that we talked about earlier not long ago think of this process as long term Working capital, think of it as short term. Okay, managing the firm working capital is the day-to-day -day activity that ensures that the firm has sufficient resources, sufficient cash to operate and avoid costly interruption. Okay, this involves a number of activities 
that they have to do related to the firm receipts and firm disbursements. So they have to decide, you know, uh, when should they receive the money, how much they should they should spend on bills, and you know, timing of paying bills. Okay. Some questions about working capital must be answers. You know, how much cash and inventory should we keep on hand? Should we sell on credit? Um, if so, what term would we offer? 30 days, 60 days? Should we offer discount, not discount? How will we obtain any short-term financing needed? Do we have some type of line of credit with the local bank in case we need money? Will we purchase, will we purchase on credit or will we borrow money on the short-term um, and pay cash? So those are the decisions that we have to make that are considered working capital. Capital is Capital is money. It's a fancy word for money. And working is how do we work the money? How do we work our capital? How do we pay our bills? How do we how do we uh, collect our money? What is our collection policy? Okay, this is the working capital decision. These are small sample, by the way. Simply put, simply put, the three areas of corporate financial management is capital budgeting, capital structure, and working capital management. Obviously, those are very broad categories, and you're gonna see there's a chapter or two for every one of them. So this is chapter one, just giving you an overview. One more thing I wanna cover for uh, the financial manager, just basically, um, just because it's, it's, it's a small section, I just would like to go over and uh, just to make sure I cover it. So this way, in case you read it somewhere, in case you read it in your textbook, and that's the goal of financial management. What's the goal of financial management? Well, you want the company to survive. You want the company to avoid financial distress, beat the competition, maximize sales, minimize cost, maximize profit, maintain steady earning and growth. So those are all obvious, you, you, you can think of them, but also the goal of financial management now, in today's world, you can agree, disagree, you should have some social responsibility. Again, that's a political, hot political uh, topic. You know, is, is financial management part of the social responsibility? Also, obviously, they have to follow rules and regulation. They cannot be unethical. They cannot break the law. Ag again, those are obvious goals of financial, of financial management. So in case you want to read this section, go ahead and read it. But just know that the goal is to maximize the profit. So the answer is maximize the profit or maximize the shareholders' wealth by maximizing the profit. It, you maximize the shareholder wealth. Now, bear in mind, I do have additional lectures about corporate finance. Maybe I have another 12 chapters and I'm, I'm adding to them. So check out my website and uh, make sure you subscribe so you have access not only to corporate finance, to all my courses. Good luck, study hard, and stay motivated.